Uh, basically, healthy believers feed in the doctrines of God's word and display spiritual strength and growth. So look in your Bibles, right now. look at and, verses one through four, and I read it with them. Um, and actually, if you're meeting with someone, you don't know very much about them, they might not even know where things are in the Bible. And so I helped them, I said, do you know where Romans is? And I show them the index, you know, and how to find it on the page number, or I'll, I'll show them, you know, basically you know where it is if you know the layout of the Bible, and you show them that, and you get them to 15, and you actually have them working with you. I read a verse, they read a verse, and you actually, you discuss. See, it's not a lecture. Discipleship is a dialogue. It's, it's going together. It's leading them down a pathway, holding their hands spiritually. And so in verses 1 through 4, what I'm looking at with them is, what, what it means to feed, uh, what doctrines are, and how you display spiritual strength and growth. Because that's what this passage is all about. So we read it. Uh, we then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproach of those who reproach me fell on reproach you fell on me. Now, verse 4 is your turn. Okay, you're, you guys are the, you're on the other side of the coffee table. Remember, you have to buy the coffee if you don't participate. And so, uh, let's all, whatever version of the Bible you have, let's read verse 4 out loud together. You ready? One, two, three, go. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Whoa, uh -oh. we all had about the same amount of stuff. Okay, so that's what this passage is about. So the next thing I do is I go through the, the verse with them and I show them, I point out words. And I say, hey, what do you think this means? The, the people who are strong. So there are strong Christians and they're, if they're strong, there are weak Christians. And I say, do you understand what a strong Christian, what a weak Christian, you know, the Bible defines that. And then I say, this, this is so important. One of the underlying messages of the scripture is we're supposed to be pleasing God, not ourselves. In fact, the underlying motivation of a godly believer is they're not in this to please themselves. And let each of us please his neighbor. Now, I might break into at that moment, uh, do you remember the little story or little song you had to learn, in, you know, five day clubs, good news clubs, or VBS or something, which went like this? Jesus and others and you, what a wonderful way to spell. There we go. Hey, we've got someone else who's in my club. Did you catch that? It says, Jesus and others and last place, you. What a wonderful way to spell joy. See, that helps you see the priorities of life. Look, look back at what it says in uh, verse 2. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good. Jesus didn't come to please himself. See, that's, that's essential for us to understand uh, the, the uh, message. Let me get back here to where I was. And then, leading to edification. Edification has to do with building up. It's kind of like what you're seeing going on uh, the stadium on ramps, you know, they keep dumping dirt and pushing it down and moving it around and doing stuff. They're building it up, uh, getting ready for uh, everybody to go to Costco and, um, or whatever. I don't know why they're doing it. I just assume it was that. For even Christ did not please himself. But then look at this. For whatever things were written before, this is the time I say, what do you think he's talking about here? He's talking about the Bible. What Bible did Paul have? Well, how many books of the New Testament were by the time he wrote this in maybe 55 AD? And you say, how do you know he wrote it in 55? You get a study Bible. If you want to disciple someone, it's imperative that you have a good study Bible. And you know I've told you my favorite is MacArthur's study Bible, but there are many study Bibles. But I would get one that addresses all, especially the, the theme and message and the, the dating of each book that answers any alleged discrepancies and and what you would come up with when someone's talking to you. But I say all scripture, everything that was written before were written for our learning. And this is a time that, that you would talk about 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and all scripture is profitable for doctrine, 
that's what's right. For reproof, that's what's wrong. For correction, how to get right. And for instruction in righteousness, how to stay right. See, what's right, uh, what's wrong, how to get right, how to stay right is what the scriptures, it's for our learning that we through the patience, did you know reading the scriptures cultivates patience? Just reading God's word as a believer connects us to a God whose spirit indwelling us produces patience. That's why if you're a regular reader of God's word and you're really meeting with the Lord, people should notice that you are more patient the longer you live. You can read the Bible and be impatient, but it means that, that you're either bulimic or anorexic. You're spitting out right away or you're not you're, you're not digesting food. You're, you're just avoiding it. You and I, through the scriptures, have patience and comfort just by us interacting with God, and all of that produces hope. And so those are the things that we're going to talk about when we're going through this.